um, obviously a P5 job or a top G5 uh, program, um, unless there's maybe a geographical tie or something. Um, as far as having Utah ties, I feel like every single Pac-12 team with Utah being in the Pac-12 now, they understand recruiting Utah and they understand that Utah has good t- good players, right? Um, so I feel like that re- that that footprint has expanded. Whereas when when uh, Coach Anderson got hired uh, the first time, Gary was like, you know what? There's there's players that are slipping through the cracks. I'm gonna grab these guys. I'm gonna grab uh, Frankie Sutera and let him walk on. I'm gonna grab Zach Vigil who doesn't have any offers and bring him in. Uh, whereas those guys now in the current climate, you know that those guys. I mean, I guess this this year aside, those types of guys aren't slipping through the cracks anymore. Um, Utah is is the state of Utah, and the the high school players are getting picked off um, from players, I guess, from from uh, programs outside of Utah, because obviously they want to steal those players from Utah and BYU, and and like you know, it's worked great for Washington, it's worked great for Oregon. I mean, look at those rosters. Even Washington State has a bunch of Utah guys. So I mean, those guys used to fall to Utah State or to BYU or somewhere else. And now, I mean, if you think about it, Utah State, you know, got some of those guys that were kind of Pac-12 good enough to play in the Pac-12, but they slid slid through the cracks. So that's not happening anymore. Um, you know, Arizona State, USC, I mean, there's every Pac-12 team is is coming into Utah to, to recruit. So I, I think that's that's created there's I'm not saying anything bad about Utah talent I think talent I think Utah State still needs to recruit in state but I think it's it's definitely changed it's not we're not in 1996 anymore so I think we can definitely you know Utah State needs to uh, think a little bit outside the box and not just 100% um, you know follow that uh, that blueprint so how important do you think, I mean, I just, I, so I had this thought on Saturday, I was watching the, uh, uh, I think it was, you know, some of these teams like Northwestern and you watch some of these programs um, like Iowa State and Indiana, you look at these programs and they, they have coaches that have, have really changed uh, those programs and have really put their stamp on on their uh on those jobs so how i guess what what would be that formula i mean what would that what would what would that formula be at utah state or what do you think about um the importance of that when you're uh considering uh, a candidate um i think that's really important i think the first time gary kind of did that because i remember um, so the first, Gary's first two years, I know we kind of struggled. I was actually on, on my mission at that point, but when, when I came back, it was like, it was awesome. Cause we finally started winning. Um, we had that seven and six season, 11 and two, but, but one thing I remember Gary, Gary always said was like players win games. And so I think he yeah. tried to be, he, he was more of a player's coach. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and I think in this day and age, you have to, cause it's evolved. Like, I mean, they always say, yeah, back in the day, coaches were tough nosed and maybe like you got to treat the players a little bit different than maybe they did back then. But I think somebody that's innovative, like you said, maybe just doesn't just hire or not hire, but recruit in Utah, but the big recruiting places like Texas, Florida, um, California, I know, yeah, some of our best, um, quarterbacks have been out there like yeah Chucky I think yeah he was from Texas so um so I think it's important to to kind of look outside the box and maybe find creative ways to motivate your players like like you mentioned Miami like I think that the turnover chain they have that that's awesome because it gets players excited to try to like go after the ball and and make football plays so so just a, a new coach I know you know, Minnesota, they have the whole row the boat thing and they're yeah. not rowing too well this year. But I mean, um, PJ Fleck, he, he's done a great job. He did a great job at Western Michigan. 
with that with that year that they went to the uh, a New Year Six and then yeah. ha- had a good, great year last year with Minnesota. So maybe just somebody that's willing to think outside the box and may- maybe those things aren't super important, but sometimes it seems like little things do make the difference and try to build that team unity because it seems like one thing that the Aggies were lacking in some of those losses is you could kind of see that, yeah, the team unity, like it's kind of crazy what's happening now, but yeah, if we can focus on the positive and try to find a coach that can be positive because it's a, the Aggies are, are a little bit, we have a little bit higher expectations. So it, it is a high stress job. So I think they'll have to, to, to avoid getting burned out. Like maybe some other coaches yeah. have and in similar situations, they'll, have to try to be positive and creative to to get the Aggies back on track where they need to be. Yeah, I mean the the reason why I, I if it was up to me I would I would hire somebody young is because they think outside the box and they're they're hungry to win games and make make things happen, right? I mean, how many times in the last few years have the Aggies been really close but haven't really I mean, I'm thinking of Matt Wells in particular and Gary the first time is you know they didn't really um i guess go all out to to win some of those games they just kind of said oh well we'll we'll roll the ball out and we'll do our best and we'll we'll uh, give it our best shot and we'll have a uh you know kind of measure our we'll have a measuring stick game against washington or against uh whoever you know wisconsin or byu or utah or whatever right whereas some of these young guys uh you know, I want, I want somebody that's, that's willing to take risks, go for it on fourth down at the 40 or 50 yard line or whatever, you know, I want somebody that's going to, that's going to take some risk and, and, uh, and, and kind of do that kind of stuff um, rather than just somebody kind of conservative or, or smash mouth football or, or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, I think at Utah state, you may have to, to do some different things, unique things to, uh, to recruit and to, uh, to win games. You know, I mean, you're going up against Boise, you know, let's take this year's Boise state game, for example, you know, Utah state was, was what a two touchdown underdog, you know, obviously they were going to have to kind of pull some things out. They weren't just going to be able to, to, to run a regular normal, game or call a normal offense they're gonna have to pull some pull some stuff out of their uh, backside to uh to get the win right or you get a bunch of turnovers on on defense maybe or something like that like the last time the Aggies beat point Bo- beat Boise State so what are you what are you expecting to see through the end of this season from the football team all right so uh, yeah we got uh, let's see we got just two more games, right? The Air Force yep. game on Thursday, and then we end next week against Colorado State. Yep. So, um, as far as results, I'm not entirely expecting wins because yeah. I mean, I mean, we just played the worst team, and and we beat them, and we did it pretty handily. But they're, I mean, near the end, they were kind of trying to start to make a run as well. So I think um, we're gonna have to do a little better. I know Frank Miley, he's auditioning for, for a head coaching position. I don't know if he'll end up getting it. I I certainly, he's an Aggie guy, so I'd love to see him get it. But um, I think if he can compete, that's, that'd be good. Um, But as far as, um, let let me just pull up um, the Air Force game. This, so our opponent this week, you know, Air Force was really, really good last year. They ran right. the triple option well. They've, they've had a week off because their game got canceled versus Colorado State. They've had a lot of games get canceled. So they've only played right. four games. So, I mean, the Aggies have maybe a little bit more experience. They've, they've had a lot of not so good experiences the first four games. But, I mean, Air Force, they dominated Navy kind of similar to so I guess what BYU did to Navy, they did lose to San Jose State, which on paper looks bad, but San Jose State's no, undefeated. They're, they're good this year. So, I um, mean, and they did lose to Boise State, but yeah, that's kind of expected. Yeah. And they shut out New Mexico. So um, I'm, I, I hope 
that it doesn't go as poorly as it did last year. I hope we can at least compete because last year it's kind of crazy, like to have an NFL quarterback. And I thought we had a lot more talent than we showed in that game and some of the other games. But um, as far as Air Force, it looks like they're favored to beat us at home. Um, oh, eighty yeah, percent chance for them. So it seems like mm-hmm. it's a the Air Force game will be a little bit harder for the Aggies. I think Colorado State's maybe a little bit more winnable. Uh, it seems like they're doing well yeah. this year. If I take a look here, they've, they've missed a lot of games too. They've missed a lot of games too. They 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 lost to Fresno pretty bad, but I mean, so did we and. They beat Wyoming, which that Wyoming would have been a good measuring stick, but I didn't think the Aggies, um, I don't know if they would have been ready to handle Wyoming because they were going through a lot. So I think that was almost a blessing in disguise to have the break from Wyoming. Um, but Colorado State head, got I think beat. I, I think I just counted that as a loss. <laughs> I, I kind of forget sometimes that that game got canceled and the Aggies didn't lose. But uh but yeah, it's uh, I mean Wyoming and Air Force are just t- such tough teams that um, it's going to be tough for the Aggies. But I think um, I think these young guys are going to going to play really hard. Um, I'm just worried about some mistakes, obviously, and and if the Aggies can score enough points um, to make up for those mistakes on defense, I think. Um, I think the Aggies could keep it close and maybe even pull out a win, but um, I'm excited to see the young guys, obviously Peasley and some of the uh, the guys on offense as well. But that defense, I think, is I think I think the defense is pretty exciting. I mean, based on what we saw against New Mexico, um, I think if Shaq Bond can kind of be the leader and and uh, Henninger Henninger and uh, some of those guys can can uh can play well and and obviously get those young young guys uh playing well as also that would be um that'd be a win in these last two games so um i think more than anything i want to see some of those guys step up and uh and get good some good experience so anything else about football or coaching no i think that's great um like you said so one thing that's positive about not playing the Wyoming game is we get to keep the rifle another year. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, I, 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 I feel pretty positive. I think we, we might win at least it'd be nice to get at least one more win. I mean, that it mm-hmm. kind of feels like a throwaway year a little bit with not going how, is, how we expected, like without yeah. any power five teams, I w- it would have been nice to try to have a great year and, and have a chance at, uh, at a mountain West championship and maybe an undefeated season. But, yeah. I mean, and now I think we got to just well, rekindle our expectations. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is in college, there's no tanking, there's no benefit to losing all the games or anything. So more than anything at this point, it's just get, get experience, try you know, try to get a couple wins. If you, if you do, you do great. If you don't, you don't. Um, but, uh, but I think it's good experience um, for the team and for the young guys, especially for the guys coming back and uh, and I would expect the uh, the new coaching staff to uh, to definitely try to get all the uh, the junior college tr- guys and the transfers from other schools and different things to kind of uh, you know patch some of the holes that the uh, the that the Aggies have and, uh, and and hope that the young guys keep getting better and uh, if if they do, I think it could be a pretty quick turnaround. I mean, there was one, I don't know if you saw the, the tweet by Dan Sorensen, who, who runs the uh, 24-7 sports um, site. I guess he's the publisher still. I don't know. If, if, if not, he's former publisher. But anyway, he, uh, he covers the Utes, and, and uh, he tweeted that, that basically that it's a, a kind of a bad job at, at Utah State. He doesn't know why anybody would take that job because it's a long-term kind of long – long rebuild and um and I guess it just depends on the hire you know I mean the hire could come in and say you know what I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh try I'm gonna build for the future or they could come in and say you know what we can win now we just need a couple more pieces and and we can um we can make it happen